Hello and welcome to another screencast on Windows Server 2012. Uh, by now you probably know my name is Jeff Alexander. I'm a technical evangelist uh, for Windows infrastructure based in Sydney, Australia. Today I'm talking about storage um, and particularly uh, a new feature in Windows Server 2012 called Storage Spaces. And I wanted to uh, go through a, a bit of a slide first of all because it really kind of talks to what we're, what we're talking about when we come regards to storage itself. Uh, in Windows Server 2012, we've uh, looked at really uh, directly addressing the need uh, for to supply cost-effective uh, storage solutions to customers that really require business-critical storage um, that might have already have investments in other types of storage arrays. Now, a lot of uh, customers that we've talked to on IT camps manage uh, storage area networks or SANs, but they also have a whole bunch of other storage that's actually out there as well. And when you look at storage spaces itself, uh, there's a couple of things. Uh, storage spaces introduces a new class of uh, technology. And it's what we call virtualization of the storage within uh, two technologies called storage pools and storage spaces. Okay, so storage pools are virtualized units of administration that are aggregates of physical disk units. Um, to provide elastic capacity expansion and delegated administration. They also provide, and so storage spaces essentially then takes this um, uh, notion of uh, virtual disks with uh, attributes that uh, gives you a desired level of, re of resiliency. A couple of, th uh, so we have storage resilience and availability with commodity hardware. And the idea is to look at hardware that you've actually got around that you want to uh, make resilience. We do uh, resiliency and data redundancy through n-way mirroring, uh, either clustered or unclustering or parity mode. We do optimization through um, thin and trim provisioning and enclosure awareness, and we have it integrated with that. Now, essentially what you're looking at on this slide is that we have a bunch of storage on this particular uh, server. It could be random sized disks, it could be um, shared SAS disks or SATA disks, and we need to present this to the operating system. And with storage spaces, Essentially what we do is we take that storage and we create a st what we call a storage pool. Now where we get this information from, uh, the, the storage pool, and essentially the way, the way that we do this is we take the disks that are attached through the standard uh, storage management APIs. They're attached to uh, the operating system itself. In, you'll see them in Disk Manager. And they have to be a set of unallocated disks that are not um, allocated to any other storage pool or allocated in a normal way through uh, disk management in Windows Server 2012. Then once we actually create a storage pool, that takes that storage, uh, that, that uh, storage, that uh, those disks that were there, uh, and it makes it uh, only available to uh, that particular pool. Now once we've actually created the pool, the next step for us is to move up into the stack and to create what we call uh, the virtualization or, um, or with those virtualized storage, and this is our storage space. We layer this up through. Now at this point in time, once we've actually created the storage space, the disks are still not available to Windows. The next step for us is to um, create a, what we call a VDisk, uh, a VDisk that, that then gets presented to the operating system through a volume. Uh, this can then be made available through other technologies such as uh, failover clustering, cluster shared volumes. Uh, we can use uh, storage spaces with cluster shared volumes as well. Uh, and then it, it'll integrate with other capabilities in Windows Server 2012. And then that then gets presented uh, and is presented to the primary workload. This could be a Windows application or a file server or something like that. That gets presented to that particular um, application workload. I wanted to just give you that snapshot of this before we actually show you how to create a, uh, a storage space. So I wanted to take you through that first. Uh, and now let's uh, we'll escape out of there because it's not uh, screencasts are not about PowerPoint. They are actually about uh, taking you through and showing you uh, the features themselves. So I'm on my uh, local server and I want to go and configure storage spaces. And essentially what I do is I go down to uh, the file and storage services part of uh, the um, server manager dashboard. And what you can see here is um, we've got uh, the server, and this is, brings us to our servers, and I am focusing on one particular server. And then you can see how we've layered this um, up through the pool. So we, we have the storage pool, which is not uh, re represented to Windows. Then we have our virtual disks, and then we have our volumes. So we're going to start down at that bottom layer, and we're going to go and look at uh, creating a new uh, storage pool and a new, uh, sorry, new storage space. So what you can see here, is I've got a 
uh, uh, just a, a bunch of disks, and these are USB disks that I've got attached to my servers. And obviously, you wouldn't want to use this in the enterprise, but this is mainly for demonstration purposes. Uh, and these are in a primordial pool, so that they're uh, available to Windows, but they're not um, available yet to um, the operating system. So let's go and have a look at those, uh, what those actually look like in uh, computer management. And if we go down into disk management, you can see that I have a bunch of unallocated disks that are currently um, presented by the management APIs. Okay, so the storage management APIs, those disks are plugged in and Windows has recognized them like any other disk. We have not created any partitions on those yet. So I'm going to come back to that in a second. So what we essentially what we need to do to create a storage pool is it's a very straightforward process. And essentially what we do, first of all, let me just I'll load that up. I'm going to go in and I'm going to go and create a new storage pool. And we're going to click next on this and we're just going to call this uh, the data pool. call it data underscore pool so that we don't have a duplicate name. Now it's going to ask us uh, what dis, which disk that we actually want to use for this. And essentially what I'm going to do is I'm just going to choose a couple of these disks. And what it allows us to do is it'll obviously we choose those two disks and then it'll tell us uh, the allocation. I'm going to choose it automatic, but we could actually um, emphasize one of those disks as a hot spare. Click next on this and it's going to go and create our storage pool. And essentially what's going to happen is it's, it's gathered the information, it's created the storage pool, uh, and then it's updated the cache. Now let's have a look at what's actually happened here. You can see that now the, in, in disk management, those two disks are no longer available uh, to any other pool or to be um, created as uh, available storage. So let's go back to our wizard. And one of the things I wanted to emphasize here is the fact that now what we do is we are able to actually um, chain these wizards together. This is one of the things that's great about Server Manager is now uh, it knows what uh, the next task that we need to do in this is to create a virtual disk. So let's go ahead and create our virtual disk. And it asks me which data pool that we want to create our virtual disk. And we're going to call this um, the data underscore pool uh, the disk. And this gives us an option to um, create a simple um, a mirror or parity. Um, so essentially what we get is the ability to create uh, a simple a mirror is um, RAID uh, 1 and parity is RAID 5. Uh, so we're just going to go and create a mirror. I'm going to go and create a thinly provisioned. Uh, this is uh, new to Windows Server 2012, is the ability to create a thinly provisioned drive. Um, and that allows us to do that fairly simply. And then we're going to specify, this allows us to specify a larger size uh, than we have available. So we're going to go and say um, 2 terabytes, and we're going to go and create that. Now what you're seeing here is a bunch of orchestration is going on in the background. And what's, what's happened here is that you can see behind the scenes is that we've created a 2 terabyte unallocated disk. And again, we've chained, chained these wizards together. Uh, with The next step is to create a volume. And when we create a volume, that's where uh, the volume is what gets presented to Windows. So we're going to go and choose our VDisk here. We're going to create a 2 terabyte volume. We're going to assign a drive letter to this. This gives us the option to choose um, what file system we want to use. We can choose NTFS or we can choose the new REFS file system. I'll talk about um, uh, the REFS in another uh, screencast, but we're just going to go and uh, choose um, NTFS for this, and we have the ability to do deduplication on this volume as well. I'll talk about uh, deduplication at another time. So we'll click Next on this, and we'll click Create. And now what you're going to see in the background is you're going to see uh, that uh, our volume is, we're going to gather the information, we're going to format that volume, and then we're going to add access path and update the cache. And what that allows us to be able to do now is to um, use uh, one tool in the place of probably four to five different tools to create uh, a new volume on the disk itself.
So we'll let that go ahead and uh, format that particular volume. And once it's formatted, it'll go and add an access path, which will go and add the um, path that it needs to access that disk. And bang, we've got a, a disk there. So let's go back into um, Server Manager. And we'll go and look at our data pool. And what you can see here is that our data pool uh, consists of our data pool VDisk, which is a thinly provisioned uh, disk at this point in time. And then it has our two physical disks for that as well. Now you notice up here that I, I have another pool uh, which is uh, running low on free space. And this is a thinly provisioned uh, drive. And what we can do is we can go and, sorry, this is a fixed provision drive, but if we want to go and add additional uh, physical disks to this, I can just go and grab a disk from our storage pool. And it'll automatically fix up the storage problem for us. And it's that easy for us to go and add that additional disk. Now, what if I, want, if I had a faulty disk within this, uh, this thing and I needed to replace it? What I could do is I could go and remove this disk. And what um, Storage Spaces will do is it'll attempt to um, repair or rebuild that particular um, mirror to make sure that we're not going to lose any data. And that way, uh, it's, a, it's a pairing, the, repairing the physical disks, and then that puts that back into the, um, to the available primordial pool. So uh, in summary, really, Storage Spaces is uh, a great uh, new feature in Server 2012 that essentially allows you to address the need of providing continuous available uh, storage through um, uh, you know, commodity hardware, uh, and a, a really, a, uh, by virtualizing this commodity hardware, it really um, allows you to have reliable and scalable storage at uh, a very affordable price. So thank you for um, watching this screencast. I hope that gives you a good summary of storage pools and storage spaces in Windows Server 2012. Thank you.